All right, so this is an AM FM radio out of a 75 Chevy C10. So this is a Delco unit. It's a mono radio. The goal here is to add an aux input into it. Now I don't really know too much about electronics. I know the minimum, and I've never done something like this before, but I know it's possible, so I'm gonna figure out how to do it, and I'll show you how I do it. Uh, so we got a setup, we got a battery, we have a speaker, we have our radio. The radio does in fact work, so all we have to do is find the correct spot to jump in and add our aux input. Okay, the underside of the radio took the three screws off, and now we can lift it off. So slide it back, lift up, here we go. The theory behind this, before we get too far, so you understand what we're trying to do here, all radios have a volume adjustment. So if your radio has a manual adjustment and it's not a digital volume knob, then we're good. Volume knobs are potentiometers, so short and pot, they're, they're the pots. Pots have three sides, and one's going to be ground, one's going to be um, some sort of signal, and then one's called the wiper. Basically, we're finding one of the three wires to tap into, that way we still have functionality of our volume knob. So draw it out here, very crude, but volume pot, three terminals, and it connects to the radio in three spots. Doesn't really matter where, just this is the basic understanding of it. Now with the aux input, here we have five inputs for the aux uh, input, so five pins. One of them is ground, we have a left and a right aux in, and then a left and a right output. The idea here is we are going to combine the right and left aux in from stereo to mono with a pair of resistors. That's going to go to the volume pot. And then the left and the right output are going to go to the radio PCB to kind of interject this circuit here. So that's the basic idea here. All we have to do is find the correct spot on the pot here. All right, so I have a stereo speaker. These are two small tweeters, um, but I believe the way it's set up is this is like left input, that's right input. So what I have is each one of these is four ohms, each of the tweeters. This factory radio needs eight to 10, so I have this wired in series. So positive to positive, uh, and then negative from the radio to negative on the other side and then I'm jumping from negative to positive for the speakers to wire it up in series. Um, now I understand probably not the best thing to do. Um, definitely not a good idea if you have like an amplifier or anything like that. Uh, I'm gonna keep the volume low so this should be relatively safe. All right, connected the radio to the battery. We're hooked up to the speaker. Turn it on. Something doesn't sound right, but hey, the sound's working, so let's see. So I'm gonna figure out exactly where the wiper wire is. All right, so I figured out the aux, how it works, and how this receiver input I have works, uh, since it didn't come with the diagram. So the one I drew over here is just one I found online for a Radio Shack part. I was cheap, didn't wanna pay Radio Shack shipping, uh, so I ordered this one, it's just the cheapest one, basically. Um, and so here's an aux input. I don't know for sure if this is right and that's left channel. I looked it up real quick. It seems to be kind of standard like that, but it doesn't really matter since this is mono application anyways. Uh, but trace the wires using continuity on my multimeter. was able to come up with this diagram for this aux input receiver. So we see the two on the end are going to be the audio in and the two in the middle are going to be the audio out. So I have to jump these two and jump these two. That's the plan. All right, after some trial and error, finally figure it out. So as I said, the pot has three terminals, three pins. Um, what I was reading with my multimeter is this top one was putting out millivolts, but the bottom two, the one right here was putting out roughly battery voltage all the time, 
the one over there was only putting battery voltage when it was turned on. So first I tried hooking up to that, didn't work. So I switched to this one, didn't work. This one putting out millivolts, this one did work, which really makes a lot more sense because audio is low voltage stuff. So, you know, <laughs> staying away from amplifiers and all that crazy stuff, but yeah, that makes more sense. So, the the first terminal, the one all the way on the top, that happened to be the wiper on this pot. That was what was necessary in order to get audio. And show you a close up here. I, I don't really like this aux. Um, one, for the fact that there's no like threaded end on the side, so it's gonna be difficult to mount somewhere. And then two, the pins are all together, so it's kinda hard to get it in there without them shorting out on each other. So I think I might bite the bull and just buy the Radio Shack one with the pins in the in a better spot. But turn it on. Oh, I need to turn the music on. That would help. So here we go. So the factory amp in here, not very good. Can't really handle um, too much. It's just it's clipping like up crazy when you really turn it up but so this is on FM it appears to not pick up the radio noise but when I have it switched to AM it will play the radio in the background while you're listening to your aux music so you kind of have to be careful there um, I don't know why it's like that on this I, I'm, I know it's radio specific so I, I don't know what's going on here but FM radio and I don't get the bleed through which is good um, so yeah now I can focus on cleaning this up figuring out where I want to mount this or do I just bite the bullet and buy the Radio Shack one uh, but yeah I'll update you once I have it all tidied up and with the setup I have the aux unplugged and we do in fact still get uh, radio noise so it really is this simple as trial and error if you want or you can you know do the right thing like use a scope to find the right sine wave that's the wires putting out but or just trial and error kind of like what I did it only has three so you you can try um, so the bottom two are I have my jumper wires because I unsoldered them I'm, I need to solder them back in but the top one here as I said this is this is the one that we interrupt the circuit on and put our aux receiver in. Alright, I have the radio on the dash. I came up with another plan. I, I want to try to convert this to Bluetooth instead of aux. You know, aux was a proof of concept, and now that I know how to do it, I want to convert this to Bluetooth, because uh, I would prefer to use Bluetooth rather than aux. But, you know, that's only going to be assuming I can do it and that the quality is still okay. But here it is mounted in the dash, and I was taking a look at available spots to put it, put the aux cable, because I don't want to cut up the dash, that was the whole point of modifying this factory radio. So what I came up with is, there's a little hole down here, that would be a perfect spot to uh, either bolt or glue the aux input right there. So if you're doing this on your truck, your Chevy C10, that would be the spot to go. That's what I would say. Uh, otherwise, there's just nowhere else. You can do it without either cutting a hole in the radio itself or the dash, which, you know, that was the whole point of modifying this factory radio. All right, so that's gonna be it for this video. We successfully added aux input to the factory radio on this truck. So stay tuned. Next video on this, I'm going to be adding Bluetooth to the radio. So yeah, stay tuned if you want to see that happen. Um, and then we also have to put the factory speaker in and then put it all back together. So more to come. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.